What is up, everybody? It is our last show of the year. I cannot believe it, but we have a very special guest today we're going to talk about, especially uh, a couple topics that we want to really be talking about today is Amarosa and also 50 Cent's $8 million deal, all that and more on Black Hollywood Lives this week. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Live this week. We gon' make them, make them bounce to this, yeah. We gon' make them, make them bounce to this, yeah. Uh, it's time. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Black Hollywood Lives this week. I am your host, Daryl Kristen. Joining me today is the festive, very festive, yes, Courtney Stewart. Yes. Very holiday ish. I wore my holiday sweater. I'm Shout out to it. Sharif Fletcher, who hooked me up with my sweater last year. We had a fight about whether this was an ugly sweater or not, so I decided it's my ugly, nice. not ugly. Nah, it, you, you pull it off well. Yeah, I put it together. <laughs> See, Demetrius? It. It works Fashion. in an outfit because he was hating. No, it looks it looks good. It looks good. Thank and you, our you. very special guest today, I forgot the memo, I guess, because you guys got the black on. Oh, but yeah. you heard a single right there, no yep. one. Yeah. Mr. Don Benjamin yeah. in the house. What's going on? Thanks for having me. Man, welcome, we glad welcome. to have you here today. Yes. And it's the last show, so yeah, last we're going show out with the bang. We're bringing the best. Yes. <laughs> bringing the best. That Dope. single is hot, man. Yes, Thank you, man. I'm feeling that. that. Yeah. So people can now go ahead and buy it on yeah, Spotify. iTunes, Spotify, Amazon. It's me and my girlfriend, actually, so Leanne V is on the hook with me, yeah. Oh, dope, man. Ooh. Also, you got a little, like, uh, mixing of musical relationship love. and musical love. Right, right, right. right. How's that work out? <laughs> it's good, man. It works well. It works well. John, I gotta say, um, I, I, this is the first time hearing it, and uh, I just added it to my to my library. Hey, oh, hey, man. Hey, hey, I appreciate that. Right, right. Cha -ching. Thank you. A little cha-ching yeah. sound, but yeah. I like yeah. get some plays from me. Hey, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's all right. I'm gonna add that to the gym playlist, too. Appreciate I'm that. looking for that hype track. Yeah, yeah. appreciate that. Well, we're gonna talk to you more about your single, uh, um, and a lot more projects you're working on right when we get through these hot topics here. So Courtney's going to stop topics. us off. topics. Okay, well, first we're going to celebrate one of the best movies of the year. It was Get Out, guys. And the African-American Film Critics Association has awarded Get Out as the best film, the best director, and the best actor, and the best screenplay for the entire year of 2017. So shout out to them. Congratulations. Of course, the film was awesome. I loved it. Yeah. Y'all loved it. I mean, I still watch it on when it comes on you HBO. still watch you it. Know? I mean, I'm still watching it. You I watch it every chance you get. I do. I love that film. I thought it was very just creative, especially, you know, I'm a horror fan. So, you yeah. know, very... Um, I'm tough on my horror films, mm -hmm. and and this one, even though it's not really to me, even though they categorize it as a horror film, it's more suspense meets horror to yeah. me. But it is well, yeah. I mean, it's it's great. Have and you ever been in the sunken place? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> Jesus, God knows, what, God knows what I said. Right. In that sunken place, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> need to stay away from that damn sunken place. <laughs> right. But right. now I want to know how this is gonna, you know, affect the academy because. You th do you think it's going to get big nom? I really you know? think it should because like, but I think it's hard because I think people don't know what to classify it as. Just like, I mean, the Golden Globe situation where it was in the comedy category or yeah. whatever. And they were like, well, it wasn't really a drama, but it's right. not a comedy. So it's kind of, I, I don't know if people just can't put their finger on what to do with it and that's but I think that would make it all the more interesting if the Academy like recognizes it for yeah, it had like the thriller feel yeah. with the comedy twist yeah. not so much horror like yeah. it wasn't really scary but it was kept you on the edge of your seat like the I whole agree. time for yeah. sure so Big shout either out way that. it was yeah. amazing it, it made was. a crap load of money and yeah. I can't wait to see Man. what else and what it changed is. the game it just I it like did. it because it changed the game on the perspective of what films are and mm -hmm. what, what you categorize them as yes. you know with something like this for sure and isn't he working with Spike Lee on another I think so that's horror like Oh, that would be dope. Some kind of thing. I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure they're about to work together on something. Oh, that's going to so. be a, like a mind game right there. Yeah. Spike Lee doing, I you know. know. Exciting. So fabulous. Congratulations. Shout out to all of them and all the work that you guys are doing creatively. It's amazing. And I appreciate it so much. So somebody who is feeling hella unappreciated these days is uh, Ms. Amorosa. Because we got news a couple days ago, sister got let go from her job at the White House. Most of us still trying to figure out what exactly her job was. Right. And if you Google what the hell did Omarosa do at the White House, you literally <laughs> get an article that says nobody knows what the hell Omarosa <laughs> did at the White House. Did but she try to claim like she resigned or something? That's well, she, she tries to claim that she resigned. And she's saying that um, initially she had been wanting to resign and that um, uh, Sarah Sanders, who's the press secretary, said that she did resign and that she would, it would be taking effect like January 20th of 2018. But then something went down a couple nights ago and supposedly she said she resigned in person to, um, what's his face, the chief of staff 
in the Situation Room and she walked out. And he basically started, apparently rumors spread that she had to be escorted out and it was like this whole dramatic thing that she was trying to get up to the private residences in the White House to talk to Trump because she was mad and she was cussing and yelling and just being all kinds of inappropriate angry black woman. So that rumor started circulating and then she went on the, um, on ABC news this morning and she did an interview basically saying none of that is true she did resign um, in the situation room to the chief of staff like she was supposed to but she was not escorted out and she did not get inappropriate and she has lots of stories to tell and she is definitely going to tell them to whoever pays the highest <laughs> to take her story right and then yeah. all of the a lot of sisters in the journalist community crushing her Who's dragging yeah. Omarosa? I mean, Robin Roberts on Good Morning America, who don't <laughs> never do nothing sideways, literally sat there and said, bye, Felicia, yeah, on national did. television. I saw that. Yeah. So, I mean, n nobody, I mean, most black folks didn't really feel like Omarosa was really providing any support for the black community, even though she did said she did it for the culture. Yeah. We, we don't know what culture that was. No, I mean, April Rye, <laughs> who's a, a talking head, obviously, um, she said, bye, honey, you haven't done anything for the community. I mean, it was just like tweet after tweet, yeah. you know, message after message. And at the end of the day, we've had this conversation. She says that she speaks for the community, but we, when does she speak to us? Yeah. Uh, did I miss that 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 seminar? She I missed it too. I think the community. She didn't say which one that was. Oh well. So yeah. maybe we just confused, and she's speaking to the community that she knows and is aware of, and we just don't know where that is. Well, I find it interesting too that they said she was causing havoc in you know this this last couple months, especially with her yeah. and John Kelly, and they said that she he they said that he was upset because she was really close with Trump. With Trump, And that yeah. he was able, he, he talks to her like several times a week, more than, uh, yeah. than Kelly was talking to her. Yeah. And so I think that that, you know, they said They that say there's a lot of tension in the White House because he's trying to like have an actual White House, like that's right. professional and has like a job and like does their job. And then there's like the Trump bets that run around and hang out with Trump and were his reality show friends or his homies from back home. <laughs> right. And like, that's like another whole who had no idea like, oh, we can't email Russians. Yeah. Like, that's a thing. So like, I feel like their, their tension yeah. only continues to build because they're trying to deal with both of those sides of the coin, but And whatever. they said that she set off the White House alarm or something like I, that? There's all kinds of that, crazy that rumors. That she tried to it's enter like, back in after she had been fired. That she had been like, entered back in, but then she's still getting paid until the 20th. The HR representative or something came out and was like, she's allowed to continue to get paid. I, I mean, in the end, I don't know. I do think it's a little not okay that like <laughs> everybody jumped to the, oh, she was cussing and yelling and running <laughs> right, around right, and trying right, to break right. in shit. Right, right. I was right, like, yeah, come yeah, on now. Right, like, yeah. as wild as she is, <laughs> I don't necessarily yeah. think that she did that. No. Perhaps, <laughs> you know, she might have called him out his name a little I bit and walked now. away. Yeah. But I see her, you know, as walking. And, and, and every people get escorted out of their jobs all the time Absolutely. when they've been let sure. go because yeah, sure. th that's just procedure. Yeah, so it case. might not have yeah. been like, oh, she's trying to drag somebody across the floor. Like, they made it a whole thing. Right. So, but, well, well, she's gone. She's available if you want to hire her. Hire her for what? I don't know. <laughs> like, to do what? <laughs> to speak to the community. But side note, taxpayer money, y'all. Alma Russell was making $180,000 a year doing... Word? Just... I didn't even know she worked in the White House. She's an advisor and aide to Trump doing... Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Communicating stuff. I want that job. No, I don't. Me and Trump being a fight. Yeah, I don't... I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> you may be the one dragging uh, people I out, right, out, out of the White right House. No. I don't know. We would have been in a fight, but it's fine. Whatever. We're going to move on. Good luck, Omarosa girl. Um, hopefully, you know, you'll find your way, and hopefully your people, will, you know, will... I don't know. We'll rebond, yeah. reconnect. I Whatever. don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Moving on. Um, another shout out we have basically is to Saturday Night Live because they have their first ever. I can't even believe this. 2017. In 43 years, they are first ever black head writer on their staff. It's crazy. When yes. I saw that, I, I, I was like, for real? Like, really? I'm, I'm happy. Like, congratulations to uh, Michael Che, who was promoted. He's yeah. been on the show the since first, 2013. Uh, and he was promoted to head writer. So th there's like a total of four or five head writers or something. But he was promoted. And his voice, they, they said, he, you know, the last season has been, I think, the second highest rated season in over a decade. So they promoted him. And now he gets a head writer title. And that's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's definitely changing the game, and, and, you know, unfortunately it took that long for it to happen, but at least it has happened, you know, and I think that that show, you, you'll start to see the change of that show in the future because of that, you know. Do you, you think? don't think so? I don't know. I don't know. Really? Yeah, you, look, you gave me that. Because I just kind of feel like, do y'all watch Saturday Night Live? Like, 
like regularly? Uh, not in a while. No, I haven't. I'm like, who watches Saturday Night Live? Like, I watch all the have, time like, still. Like, cool, like you know, when Tiffany was on there. Well, yeah. Had, yeah, yeah, yeah. When like they have somebody guests. who I feel like you know I really want to mm-hmm. see, I'll do it. Yeah, I'm actually just surprised that it's survived so long because I know it has its ups and downs. Like obviously, in a political climate that we have, like they got all kinds of material and people are more excited to watch it. But like, I feel like Saturday Night Live has become sort of like a clip thing. Like you catch one of the skits on YouTube mm-hmm. later. Like it's right. not like, let me stay up till midnight and watch Saturday Night Live on. But I feel like we're a little biased. Cause are we're, we? you know, cause we're, you know, we're in LA. I feel like mid America yeah. yeah, probably America. sits and watch that show on Saturday nights. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I think it's still going strong. I hear a lot of people talk about it still. You hear yeah. people talking about it. Well, that's mm-hmm. good. People talking about it. So. Congratulations, Except Michael. for Courtney. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I can barely stay awake watching television until like 10.30, so I'm never going to watch it on Saturday night. But I do like, feel like, yeah, I feel like people might go back and watch it. Yeah. Like, I don't know how many people like watch Actually it right Actually watch it when it's on. Yeah. Like, that's like, like that, I don't that's time to go watch. See? You know what? Maybe Hi, Don Daisy. should be on that show. It's just musical. Yeah, yeah I, need, I, need I need to go on. We can petition that. I definitely need to go petition that. That's how Tiffany Haddish and Taylor Swift became buddies. Like, you never know. She invited to dinner parties now. Right. Once you go on, once you go. I heard. Yeah. I, heard. Good. I just need that good. one time. Just that get one, on time. one time. Right. Remember you heard it on Black Ivy Live. Invite your friends. <laughs> right. Hey, we'll we all know. We, hey, I'm going like, to let y'all we'll know. We all know. We'll be in the background <laughs> dancing for right. you. Be your backup hey, dancers. We all going. I'm like, they, they put the petition in. We all hear that. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> for real. We the community. <laughs> right. Just for the culture. Exactly. Right. Sure. <laughs> for real. We in. And we would so be back there. Look, we're laughing, but we're like, we're like, we're for real though, for real though. Like, Don, no, for real. Yo. We're gonna talk about that. No, we for see real. that ad, Don Benjamin, Saturday Night Live. I'm like, bruh. Bruh, we're like, bruh, for real? <laughs> <laughs> like, you were just talking? Okay, okay bet. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness, boy. this is hilarious. But yeah, so shout out to Saturday Night Live, y'all. All right. Um, we are gonna move on to our E Euro Web Story Spotlight of the Week. Ooh, you weren't ready for that, Anthony. He wasn't ready. See, he wasn't you weren't ready. ready so I like to keep you guessing. <laughs> there you go. Give me that. Remix that for me one more time. Yo, the ERR Web back. Story Spotlight. Of the week. There, there we go. go. Right on time. Story. Right on time. All right. Um, you know, I have to correct myself because at the beginning of the show, I said that 50 Cent actually was getting an $8, eight million, million dollar deal, but I was wrong. An error. Eight. You forgot a zero. Eight, another zero. Eight figure. Yes. deal that he's working on. They haven't even specified the full amount because of, of that. But yes. he is, uh, once again, making some money. Whoever said he was broke? I mean, I know they had filed for bankruptcy a couple years ago, and there were some things going back and forth with that, but yeah. let's put it like this. 50 is no longer broke if he was ever really broke. Uh, well, was, was power, power? Is that what power? Like the whole power thing? Well, he actually struck a, a three-show deal with stars. So one of the shows is Black Mafia Family. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tomorrow Today is the second <laughs> show. And the third show is uh, a third project to be announced which they haven't fully, you know, got all the information for that yet. But he's also currently producing for 50 Central on BET right. and starring on Power, of course, on Stars. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I guess he's paying for lunch the next time we all go. Right, I he's mean, doing his thing. You know. So he's uh, he's got a big deal and yes. making money moves. I'm, so. gl- I'm glad because I was excited about Power and, like, worried about Power when he went running off at the mouth over the summer. Whenever that was, <laughs> he was mad. He and was I mean, around the time the 50, 50 Central thing. Yeah, yeah and yeah. he's like, I'll take it away and I'll move to BT. I was like, mm, 50, yeah, don't, don't, don't do, do that, that bro. Right, don't do right. it. Like, so I'm glad they came to whatever kind of agreement they needed to come to because Power needs to stay on, yeah. at least for, like, I need at least two more. Yeah. I mean, I just respect everything overall that he's doing with business. You know, what yeah. I mean, he's really once again changing the game. And yeah, he's getting big pockets right now. So, they are big pockets. Yeah, so, yeah. it'd be interesting to see what these other shows are like as well. I am very interested because yeah. Power is real. Like, are you a Power watcher? I am, but I'm behind, behind. on this season. Yeah, I'm behind. I need on to this catch up on this season, too. but I am a Power watcher because it's not on Hulu. Because I don't have stars. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, yeah, and I don't want to watch it illegally because I'll be trying to support my people. <laughs> so I gotta wait. I gotta wait till it comes to Hulu. Hey. Because I was so mad, like season four, like didn't come until season five was almost over. And I'm like, really, yo, you wanted me to like whatever? It's fine. Anyway, <laughs> that being said, congratulations, congratulations. Fifty Cent. I'm right. excited. Yes, <laughs> she's not gonna bootleg your stuff. I'm not bootlegging bootleg. your stuff. You don't gotta worry about that. No, yeah. <laughs> I'll try and not do it either. <laughs> 
as we turn as sideways. As I turn to sideways, side eye to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, another thing that's in the news as well, which is very positive, is a black Cincinnati couple have adopted six siblings. Now, here's Aww. the twist with the six siblings. They are all Caucasian, and they range in age from 14 through 9. Uh, the parents, as I mentioned, the black family, are foster parents, mm-hmm. and they have five kids of their own that range from 19 Ooh, to 5. Uh, the parents' names are Christopher and Christina Sanders, um, and they said they made a pact when they were opening up their home to foster children. They said that whoever they got, would, they would keep them, um, no matter, they would not send them in different homes. So when the opportunity came for them to be presented with these six kids, they you know, took them all, and they're all brothers and sisters. Now, um, a lot of people have kind of been giving them a little bit of slack because they're saying, why would you adopt these you know, Caucasian kids when there's a bunch of black kids that need adoptions in the world? And you know, their response is like, listen, you know, we, <coughs> we, we want to help whoever we can help, and this is what came to us, so you know, we're opening up our homes for this. <coughs> yeah. Now, the kids, uh, the adopted kids have all changed their names. They asked the social worker secretly if they could change their names to... Uh, the initials in the household are CMS, so they all changed their first initials to a C, so they could be also included as part of the family. I think it's kind That's of dope, cool. actually. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And here's the thing: all the kids are kind of in the same age. You know, it's going to be. That's a whole lot of kids. It's a lot of That's kids. A lot of kids. Praise the kids. Lord for angels, because those parents are. They must angels. got that fifty cent money. You know, right? I'm like, how you? Right, right. 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 Take all ten. Like, how y'all right. paying for all of this? <laughs> right. But. I, Praise the Lord for that. Because that's it, oh, oh. What's what's the family the the religious family has like the 19, 19 kids in county? Maybe they're trying yeah, to do some names. nineteen kids in county kind of thing. I mean maybe, but yeah. in that case, she gave birth to all of them, and that's another right. Whole that's thing. a whole other story. I mean, that's another whole world. But wait, they gave she gave birth to nineteen kids. Yeah, yeah she, did, she gave birth to all those kids. She yeah. gave birth to all of them. They're like, nah, we'll just adopt. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. <laughs> we can help whoever we help. But that is beautiful. That is dope, because though, yeah. it is really sad how kids get split apart from their siblings and mm-hmm. don't see them for years and don't sometimes never get back in touch that's with true. them. So yeah, that's true. God bless them. Well, I always wonder too, like, okay, so it's one thing I've seen a lot of, um, you know, Caucasian families adopt African or African American kids. What kind of swag does the reverse happen when you got the black parents and then the white kids are growing I up around it. The, well, it you know, depends the on family. the black family. That is true. <laughs> like, is it a, you're right about is that. Is it a whitish type, or like, you know what I'm saying, like a suburban whitish family, or is it like a more urbanized black family? That's true. That's a good question. That's true. But I Either mean, way, it'll be fascinating. I would like to follow them, their story in like five years to see where they're all at. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just glad six babies got a home and it's they got their home together. It's dope though because it could like it could be like a role reversal type thing where it opens the eyes of some white people to I adopt agree. black kids. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, well, it's not about the color. It's yeah, about their kids. kids. And then some white people could be like, oh, you know what? That's true. Maybe I could go adopt some black yeah, kids. That's true. For sure. It's a lot of kids that need to be adopted. So, yeah. yeah. Shout and out there's to- like a, there's a hashtag or something going around right now to tr- encourage people to become foster parents. And I think it's, I don't know, foster care or foster parent. I don't remember. Um, but because we have a shortage of foster parents or people that are willing to be foster parents because it's hard. Right. And But it's needed. And it is. And lots of kids need homes. Mm-hmm. They do. Especially if you think about the holidays right now. It's like, huh. Yeah. That's true. Well, yep. shout out to the Sanders. We'll keep watching Good you Good luck, y'all. All right, now we're going to talk about some fun, extra fun stuff. Mr. Don Benjamin's single, No yes. One. You know, we played yes. it a little bit earlier. And uh, you had mentioned already that people can find it on Spotify and over your social media yeah. and everything. What influenced <laughs> you with this track? Um, well, me and my girl have both been musicians before we got together, before, like, all the other stuff took off. And so um, I was working on a project, and I was like, yo, we should do something fun that's, like, has like just a feel good vibe, like kind of relationship, like no worries in the world type thing. Like no one could come in between the love we got. Yeah. So um, we just got in with our producer sounds. It was like kind of vibe and he threw, uh, threw it together real quick. We came up with this song within like an hour. Wow. wow. Yeah, like real <laughs> quick. So um, it's just, we wanted to do something to feel good, people yeah. to feel good. It's a lot of songs right now that are talking about doing drugs and all that other True. stuff and I and I came up like in the 90s early 2000s hip hop vibe you know what I'm saying so I was like I want to put something out that has a good bop to a good vibe yeah. feel good and then who who influenced you as far as like even your hip hop artists like who did you love the most and even when you say if you were looking at your yeah. music you would want to emulate um, coming up it was a lot of like Jay Z Nas yeah. uh, Tupac Big um Nowadays, it's been like Drake, J. Cole, yeah. Kendrick, yeah. like the more lyrical type artists. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Who would you want to collaborate with most right now? Yeah, I'd love to work with J. Cole. Mm -hmm. He's dope. Kendrick is amazing too. Yeah. Like I live out here in LA, so to do something with Kendrick would be mm -hmm. crazy. Um, I, I collaborate with a lot of R&B artists. Um, just because it kind of it goes kind of hand in hand because people are like you're a model why are you rapping right they don't understand that I was rapping before so it just gives them an easier way to kind of to roll along with what I'm doing so I mean if even if I worked with like Bruno Mars or yeah or like Miguel or something it would be really dope where would you like to see rap hip hop music kind of go in the question. next few years because we like you said like mm. 90s was one thing and then now it's kind of a whole other space like in the next five to ten years like what would you want to see happen in uh, I mean, I understand. I was talking to somebody the other day about this, and they're like, well, back in the day, people was talking about selling drugs. Now people are talking about doing drugs. But even, like, the rock and roll artists <laughs> back in the day, low-key was talking about doing a lot of they drugs. Were, yeah. Yeah. So there's For always kind of been that error. But I feel like I just want more storytelling, I guess. Um, I feel like there's not a lot of it. Like, J. Cole puts something out every, every couple years. Yeah. But it's like, other than J. Cole, I don't get put onto a lot of storytelling-type music where I can connect with it, where I'm like, yo... That brings back memories of my childhood or mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying I don't feel like there's a lot of that so I feel like if there could be more storytelling records like to come out would be that's what I'd want to hear that's dope and then how would you describe your sound to people um real like real vibey uh like a R&B smooth I do a lot of storytelling stuff as well yeah. and then and then of course I I have some records that are like just for the bounce just to put on in the club <laughs> but what I love to do is tell <laughs> stories I love to tell stories yeah and then you also are featured on BH one's uh, scared famous yeah the finale was last Monday yeah um, and I but it was amazing. <laughs> I was like, it was, it was like yeah. how was that yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I feel like you got a little bit more tea to give us real quick. That it's was funny like, because like everybody was like real reality stars that I was with. Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like Tiffany, um, mm -hmm. Safari, Erica, uh, like everybody in there was like, they're on a lot of reality shows. Yeah. Like me, I, I did America's Next Top Model, but like that's not what I do on a daily basis. Right. So yeah. to be around that energy and like, to see how people turn on when the camera comes on yeah. was like, it was funny because it's entertaining for me because I already kind of watched them all on TV. So to be around it, but it was a lot. Like, it was a lot of energy, and then it was hot as hell in Savannah, Georgia. I was going to say, because y'all in Savannah. Y'all like, yeah, were Savannah. Y'all yeah, was, was in the it swamp. Was hot. I don't know okay. what month you filmed, but no, it was, it was, it was summer. summertime. Yeah. It was hot, and, like, the house was legit haunted, haunted. and, like, it was it was creepy. That's like, what I was going to ask, too. Was it legit haunted? Like, yes, yes. There was, Of course, there was, like, production stuff yeah. added to it, but the house was legit haunted. Like, there was weird stuff going on, and, like, I don't like bugs. I don't like heat and none of that. And, like, <laughs> You're the very first, city. yeah, and, like the first episode, they put like scorpions and roaches Ooh, and snakes and all this crazy. And I'm like, I just wanted to do it. The main reason I wanted to do it, it was for a charity. So yeah. we were competing for charities. Yeah. So it was like a bigger purpose than to just mm -hmm. go on a TV show, win some money, whatever. Um, and my charity is for domestic violence. It's okay. peace over violence, and I watched my mother deal with domestic violence mm -hmm. as a kid. So mm -hmm. it was like something bigger. You know what I'm saying? To go and actually be able to compete for that. Yeah. It was like bigger than myself and just making a quick check. Yeah. So it was a good experience to be able to do that. Is there anybody in the cast that you really bonded with that you didn't necessarily know that well before that you'll keep in touch with? Um, Eva. Mm -hmm. Eva was on there from Top Model and her personality is like really good spirit, like always positive no matter what. Um, so we definitely stay in touch now. Safari. Honestly, before the show, like I knew him kind of, but I thought he was mad corny. I was like, bro, you're corny as hell. <laughs> the coconut oil. <laughs> but after getting to know him, he's just like a really big, he's like a grown kid. He's yeah, like a really yeah. goofy guy, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So I, I talk to Safari all the time, and he's like a little kid. And then um, Erica's really cool. Like everybody was really cool, and like just getting to know them beyond the reality TV shows. And especially loving hip hop is all about yeah. drama. So Absolutely. like to get to know them beyond the drama yeah, man, was yeah. was dope. Cool, cool. What was one of the scariest things that you experienced that you were like, whoa, this is whoa, it's too much? Uh, either the first one where I had all them damn the scorpions and stuff yeah. on me, or we had to be locked in coffins, and I'm claustrophobic. Oh damn! So like when you lay in it, you legit hear like a mechanical lock click, and like I tried to push it just to see if they were just messing with us, and it was legit locked, and I was like. Lord, just get me through this, Lord, please. Just let me get through this experience. Yeah. And I was like legit freaking out because I hate small spaces. And how long did you have to be in the coffin? I was in there for probably like 10 minutes. Whew. 
five, ten minutes. Which probably seemed like ten hours. It yeah. seemed like forever. Yeah. It, and it, mind you, like it's hot. Like you yeah, said, like hot. Savannah is hot. There's no air control, and yeah, it was creepy. Yeah, I, can, I don't think I could do no coffin. No. Like, yeah, up in there the like coffin that. was crazy. If yeah. you could do another reality show that's popular right now, what would you do? Another reality show. Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, put me on the Kardashians. <laughs> Maybe you'll get more airtime than Rob. Uh, uh, he doesn't, you know. <laughs> right, let me take over Rob's spot. Take over Rob's spot. Y'all do your little brother. I was on, I did a few on growing up hip hop. I'm good friends with Romeo. Okay. Um, so I went on there a couple of times with him. But, um, yeah, I don't. I feel like there's so much reality now. There yeah. is. It's, it's like, like everything it's is reality still, TV. Yeah. yeah, I'm honestly, me and my girl are trying to figure out a way to do something where it's like, where it could be about our life, but not so reality based. Okay. Like bring a different dynamic to the the reality world. So, yeah. a lot of people check on me and my girl. So we're yeah. trying to figure out a way where we can bring them like a show. It's not just like follow us. This is you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. Like if it's a cool idea that I'm still trying to figure out. Right. Would y'all ever consider loving hip hop? To nah, <laughs> they've hit me a few times, and like, no disrespect, but that's just not where that's I see. Like, I don't like drama in my life. Like, every I time there's that. drama, I'm like, I go that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I feel that. Yeah. So I wouldn't. I'll just be in the back every time I love hip hop. <laughs> just <right>? watching. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be the 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 the, the storyline is quiet. Yeah. Right. Right. And then you know, obviously, we're at a place right now where. You know, it's about to be Christmas and, mm-hmm. and, and holidays are coming up. Is there a special Christmas gift that you'd like your lady to get you? Um, I don't know. I was just telling her I got, like, l- thank the Lord, but I've been able to buy myself everything I've wanted lately. But um, I like sneakers. I like clothes, jewelry. Uh, there's not really anything too crazy, honestly. Like, I just, right now, like, I lost my father a few months ago. And Sorry to hear that. I'm just in a moment where I just like to be around the people I care about. Yeah. yeah. So you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not so materialistic. It's rather, like, the time is so much more important. Yeah. So that's kind of sure. where I've been at. Yeah, and then, I mean, obviously, you know, we know you as a hip-hop TV personality, but you got a big start in modeling mm-hmm. that you're doing your thing. Some of the biggest campaigns out there, you know, Gucci, uh, True Religion, all, that, all those big campaigns. Is there... Another campaign that you're working on right now that that we're gonna see in the future, or is there an ideal um, designer that you'd like to work for? Um, well, I I've been doing a lot of stuff with guests. Um, I just got hit up to do some stuff with Dolce Gabbana, so that's a big one. Uh, I'm doing the fashion show for the I'm walking in Milan Fashion Week for them. Um, so hopefully I get the campaign. Oh yeah, that would be that would <laughs> that's be huge. that would be huge. So. Trying to put that out, out in the universe. Mm-hmm. That's right, manifesting it. Yes. Manifesting the universe, yeah. Well, man, change. as you're developing the music, is there more, you know, when are you gonna have other tracks that people can download and hear all that fun stuff? Yeah, I'm putting a, uh, a full seven record EP out in January. So next month, top of the year, I'm gonna put out an EP which has seven records. Um, has some storytelling records on there, has a couple just like fun club records. But yeah, this is like my first project i put out a lot of singles like every few months i'll put out singles this is my, my first project other than like a mixtape mm-hmm. that i'm putting out so i'm excited yeah awesome. you gonna bring tyra to do some singing vocals singing. on i'm gonna tell tyra like yo <laughs> we need you do something through, we need you do something be in the video something something, <laughs> something. tyra tyra in a video something <laughs> yeah. i'll be watching for real awesome. all right man well it was great having you here today man uh you know um we applaud all your accomplishments and you got to come back especially when you drop the ep sure. yes, right yes. We'll, we'll hype it up even more and uh you know where can fans find all of your stuff on social media uh everything is on my instagram twitter or facebook it's all at it's don benjamin and my official website is imdonbenjamin.com so everything is out there courtney where can fans find you um everywhere all over social media at store starlet and you can find me at Dario Christian on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and on Reels channel, Broken Famous. We are now going out with this track, so get your dance on as we yes. so scurry on that. out to 2017. Dance out to 217 and yes. praying into a happy 218, 2018. Yes. 2018. All right, y'all, have a great uh, year. We'll see you in a couple weeks. I know. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Christian, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio, Instagram at KingXO Bay. Thanks for tuning in. Hollywood redefined.
of the views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.